If C were a classic Swiss army knife, D is the secret prototype that added a laser cutter, a torque wrench, and a safety latch, and then somehow got left in a drawer. Today, we're asking a simple question. In 2025, is D the lost successor to C? And if you write C today, should you consider D on your next system? First, what does successor to C actually mean? It's not a slogan. It means the language still maps closely to the hardware, it doesn't get in your way when performance matters, and it feels similar to a C programmer. If you can reason about memory, control layout, and call directly into C libraries without drama, you're in the conversation. D didn't appear out of thin air. It began in the early 2000s, primarily by Walter Bright, later joined by Andre Alexandrescu, with production compilers like DMD, LDC, and GDC bringing it to real hardware. The goal was blunt. Keep the raw power of C, modernize the language, and remove a lot of foot guns without building a huge wall between you and the metal. On the surface, D reads like a cleaned up C or C++. The syntax is familiar, there's no mandatory borrow checker, and no ceremony to call into C. I'm talking to you, Rust. You still write pointers. You still think about stack versus heap. You can usually predict the cost of your abstractions, but D also gives you modules instead of headers, same strings, better reflection, and compile time features that C can only dream of. If you're living in a world of C headers and vendor SDKs, D treats that like home turf. You use extern C to keep ABI compatibility, and you link to C libraries without contortions. To use C APIs, you either write or reuse D bindings, a D interface that mirrors the C headers, or in many cases today, use import C or existing community bindings so you're not hand translating. The punchline, interop is straightforward, and you can keep your C surface area stable while writing new logic in D. Let's talk about memory. C gives you malloc or m allocate and free, and more or less shrugs. D gives you options. There's a garbage collector you can lean on for high-level code. There's an at no GC annotation to forbid GC and hot paths. You can use RAII with structs and scope guards for deterministic cleanup. You can build allocator patterns and explicit ownership when you want to control lifetimes. With modern scope slash return scope features, you can prevent accidental escapes of references. The key is that you opt in. A D code base can use GC in non-critical parts and go for the no garbage collector annotation for the inner loops and low latency edges. You decide the trade-offs file by file, function by function. Safety is something you can dial. C trusts you entirely. D lets you declare intent. Mark code as safe with a safe annotation and the compiler verifies it can't scribble over memory. Drop into system annotation when you need to touch raw pointers. Use the trusted annotation for the narrow bridges between them. Combine that with attributes like no throw and pure plus scope style lifetime checks and you get a spectrum. From C style, I know what I'm doing, to guard railed, this can't blow up. D aims for zero cost abstractions without the ulcer. Templates, ranges, and UFCS, or the Uniform Function Call Syntax, lets you write high level code that compiles to tight loops. Need a tiny abstraction for bytes, slices, or iterators? Template it, keep it generic. The standard library's range algorithms were built with this in mind. Here's where D gets spicy. Compile time superpowers. CTFE, or the compile time function evaluation, 
lets you run real D functions at compile time. String mixins can generate code, static if, and powerful templates let you specialize for platforms without macro soup. Yum. You can compute lookup tables, validate invariants, generate bindings, and stamp out boilerplate before your program even runs. For seasoned C devs who live in the if def land, this is a whole different gear. Contracts and testing are baked in. You can write in and out contracts on functions and drop unit test blocks right next to your implementation. Build with unit tests and those tests compile into the binary, run automatically, catching regressions early and close to the code that matters. Concurrency doesn't have to be heroics. C's model is basically, good luck. You can write great C with discipline and patience, which not everyone has. D gives you several paths. Message passing via standard concurrency, actors, and spawn slash receive, for example. Cooperative fibers, using something like core.thread.fiber. When you want lightweight coroutines, and classic threads and atomics when you need them. Because you can forbid the garbage collector in critical sections and pin buffers, you can design low latency pipelines without mysterious pauses and still use higher level concurrency where it's safe. Tooling and compilers are in good shape. You got DMD for fast iterations, LDC for aggressive LLVM optimizations and GDC leveraging GCC. Dub, or D-U-B, however you fancy pronouncing that, is the official package manager and build tool, closer to cargo than to make files. The ecosystem isn't as gigantic as Rust's crates, but it's practical and keeps you moving. So, after all that, where does D actually beat C? Productivity, for one. Modules instead of headers, better generics, real metaprogramming, maintainability, such as using contracts, unit tests, and attributes, so it makes intent visible. It's safer by default. You can fence off unsafe code. It has interop targeting the CABI is straightforward. Using C libraries is routine through bindings or import C, and performance, well, you can use that no garbage collector annotation we talked about and tight loops, and you can hit C class speed while writing less glue. But where does C still win? Well, ubiquity. Every platform, every vendor, every build system, no C. Tooling inertia, their sanitizer support, static analyzers, and battle-tested compilers that are universal in C. And on the tiniest targets, those microcontrollers with single-digit kilobytes. C's minimalism and universal blessing can still be the safer bet politically, if not technically. Let's pause in that garbage collector, honestly. Yes, D has one. And yes, you can avoid it where it matters, you Java haters. The 2025 nuance is that the garbage collector is just one tool. If you, as we mentioned, if you slap on that no garbage collector annotation, manage memory yourself in the hot path, you don't pay for the collector there. Meanwhile, non-critical code can use the garbage collector and keep development velocity high. That split strategy is often the sweet spot C teams actually want but can't easily express in plain C. If you're C first and suspicious, try better C. You get D syntax, templates, compile time features, and a nicer build story without pulling in the D runtime. You can grow from better C to full D gradually, file by file, as comfort and constraints allow. Think of it as a C on-ramp with guardrails. What might migration look like in practice? Phase one, you start with single D module in better C that replaces a thorny C file. Maybe a parser or code generator that benefits from templates and CTFE. Phase two, you expand to non-critical modules using full D with the garbage collector for speed of development. Phase three, latency sensitive paths. You enforce the no garbage collector, safe, no throw, and use scope guards and region allocators. Phase four, wrap old libraries with clean D APIs, keeping the ABI stable so nothing downstream breaks. 
Consider a mini case study. Imagine you own a C service that parses messages, transforms them, and hands them to a DMA ring buffer. Parsing and transform logic love compile time tricks. Great for D. The DMA handoff needs deterministic timing. Great for the no garbage collector annotation, safe annotation, slices with explicit bounds, and zero copy views. You keep your interface in that extern C, ship the same shared library, and start retiring macro jungles without rewriting the world. What about Rust and Zig? They're allowed in 2025, and for good reasons. Rust's ownership model gives compile time guarantee C can't. Zig's build system and allocator model are refreshingly explicit, but both demand changes in how you think. D sits in a different slot, embraces C's mental model, then layers modern features on top. But if Rust is prove it to the compiler, and Zig is say exactly what you mean, D is write like C, then selectively dial in safety and power. That's a valid design point, and one many C teams prefer when deadlines loom. Performance deserves a reality check. On raw throughput, a well-tuned D program with, again, that no garbage collector annotation and LDC can match C closely. The difference, as always, is in the code you write and the constraints you impose. When you let these garbage collector handle mundane allocations off the hot path, you reduce mental overhead. When the stakes are high, you make it no garbage collector and profile. That flexibility is the pitch. What does it feel like day to day? Well, you stop writing header files and macro meta programs. You write contracts and APIs you actually care about. You keep your C interop, but the glue gets thinner. Your build stops being a set of rituals, dub, or D-U-B, whatever you're into, just works. Who should pick C in 2025? Teams targeting the tiniest MCUs with no room for a runtime or new tools. Shops bound by vendor tool chains that only bless C. Code bases with decades of C static analysis and compliance that can't absorb the change. For those, C remains the right answer for better or for worse. Who should try D in 2025? C teams drowning in macros and longing for templates and CTFE. Performance sensitive apps that need a split personality. No garbage collector cores with higher level edges. Organizations that want to modernize incrementally without jumping to a whole new paradigm. There are a few things to watch for. D's ecosystem is smaller than C's, which no surprise there. Some of you may have never even heard of D. So be mindful of library maturity. Treat the garbage collector intentionally. Ban it in latency critical paths. Establish coding guidelines with the safe annotation as the default and system annotation carefully contained. Hook in tests via unit test and CI with... DMD for fast checks, and LDC for production-grade builds. And keep your C interop clean with explicit ABIs, bindings, and import C where it fits. So is D the lost successor to C? It's certainly the most C-native modern language that lets you keep your instincts and add power responsibility. If you want C's predictability with fewer traps and you don't want to relearn programming from scratch, D is absolutely worth a 2025 look. Not as a slogan, but as a migration path, you can start this quarter. If this helped, tell me what you'd build in D first. A parser, a network stack module, or a better C drop-in for your hottest loop? Or are you still pretty suspicious of D and other C usurpers? Leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more Tech Talk from the Techie Shop. If you like this video, watch this video here for more Tech Talk.